homo sapiens on the intertubes. It has been an insanely busy week. It is 4.30 a.m. This is your no bullshit resource for those issues that animate the arts and designer studio. Why am I up at this hour? Life as an artist or a designer is a bit like being part of Scientology. How? That's what we're going to discuss this morning. This is episode 8 of Studio Practice, and these are the things of which we shall not speak. So why am I so busy? The focus of the academic year at Cranbrook Academy of Art is something called reviews. Reviews are a series of rigorous, one-on-one -on -one desk critiques with the artist in residence. Reviews span five days. They begin at 9 a.m. and they end at about 7 p.m. So how is being an artist or a designer a bit like being in Scientology? Reviews provides me with the perfect opportunity to explain how. A quick disclaimer, I'm not advocating that you become a Scientologist. As a matter of fact, if you are a proctologist, an otolaryngologist, or any of the other ologists, you might be better served. I'd imagine it's a bit like Scientology Sea Org. A big boat. Specialized secret knowledge. Sacred ritual. Sacred rites. Revelations of truth. There's a frankness with which we can speak. Interesting. But when two artists or designers enter into the studio and the doors are closed, there is a type of conversation that can take place that's not for the outside world. I, <clears throat> I often draw on the language of the Italian mafia as one of the best ways that I know to describe what we do. The expression, la casa nostra, this thing of ours, this thing of ours, la casa nostra, that thing not to be shared with the outside world. These are the things of which we must not speak. The simple truth is that there is a frankness with which we speak behind the closed doors of the studio that is to be vigorously protected. All right, let's take a look at some of the stuff that I have popping in the studio. Even when I'm slammed during reviews or traveling, I try to stay productive. I try to keep the actual process of work creation always flowing. Between reviews and meetings at wrap-ups, I'm drawing. And here is the major point for this episode. The internal critical voice of judgment is a major stumbling block to artistic creation. You know that little voice inside that rides herd and tells you what to do? Distracted drawing, distracted creation is an effective way of switching off the critical voice of judgment. What am I saying? Construct scenarios where the automatic process of creation switches off your critical voice of judgment, like drawing in a meeting. Any process of creation that can disengage critical thinking aids the designer or the artist. I want to be perfectly clear about this. Friedrich Nietzsche speaks powerfully to the toxicity of thou shouts. The goal of the creative act is a form of Nietzsche's wheel rolling out of its own center. When we are critical during the actual act of creation, we destroy this process. For more information on this and to follow this thread further, I suggest you read Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra. All right, let's recap. Principle number one, the internal critical voice of judgment is a major stumbling block to the act of creation. Number two, distracted or casual creation is an effective method to switch off the critical voice of judgment. Number three, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Aesop Rock, but take his advice and keep it easy. And here's the suggestion for this episode. Do everything in your power to disengage critical thinking during the act of creation. Utilize critical thinking during critique. See last week's episode for thoughts on that process. All right, homo sapiens on the intertubes, you're going to have to do a lot better about smashing the like button and leaving comments. And don't worry, Australopithecus. Yeah! I see you, dog. It's mail time. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, spread the word on the podcast if you like what's going on. But do me a favor, don't be shy. Write some comments, some suggestions for future episodes I received. I did, in fact, receive one comment this week from Animal Rights Activity, in all caps, who said, Escape the motherfucking cube farm. Escapey! So thank you very much, Animal Rights Activity, but let's get these comments popping, all right? The sun's coming up, and I have another day of reviews, so I gotta go. Till next time. <laughs>